Hallelujah. My storage is empty. Can somebody say, Lord, I'm available to you today? Hallelujah. God is a good God, and he's what? Oh, I like to hear you say it. Say he's what? He's worthy to be praised. God, from the rising of the sun to the setting of that same sun, our God is worthy to be praised. We have a scripture this morning coming from Luke 10 and 19. It says this, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Ain't that a good thing? Isaiah said, the flower faded and the grass withers away, but the word of the Lord, what? It will stand forever. May we go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, that's right, stand to your feet, everyone. We give you glory, God, for another day, another hour, another minute, another second, just to lift your name high. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for this present, God, another day. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your anointing power, God, that rebukes chains and destroys yokes father thank you lord all you need is two or three gathered in your name <laughs> and your word declares that you would be in the midst we can look to the left and right in the front and the back and declare that you are here hallelujah oh my god your word declares that if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked way. Then, and only then, will you heal our land. Hallelujah. We need a healing in the land, Jesus. Hallelujah. And God, we can intercede today, Father Lord, for those that might be wrapped in fear. For we know you did not give us the spirit of fear, but the power, love, and a sound mind. Thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for those who are viewing at home today. God, touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, we thank you for them, God. They still believe, Lord, that you have a word for them. Oh, God, one word from you can change any situation. One word from you can heal bodies. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord is our light and our salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of our life. Whom shall I be afraid? God, we thank you, Lord. Oh, God, just for another day to lift your name high, to magnify your name, Jesus, to glorify your name, God. In the name of Jesus, God, do it for the man, Lord Jesus, that was standing in the place of Peter today, Lord Jesus. Anoint his tongue like the pen of a ready writer, God ready to proclaim your word Father Lord in the name of Jesus God do it for the praise team God as they sing songs of praises God anoint them God yes they have the words God but we need your anointing power that destroys yokes in the name of Jesus anoint the musicians Lord Jesus oh God they have the skill and the ability Lord Jesus but anoint their hands God on the high sounding cymbal anoint their hands Lord on the string instruments and organs Lord in the name of Jesus have your way, Father God. Have your way, God. We will declare, God, that there's nothing like you. Somebody say, nothing like you. No one else gets the glory. No one else gets the honor. No one else, God. No one else. Somebody shout, no one else. Come on, El Top, open your mouth and say, no one else, God. Oh, God, we will be forever to give your name glory and honor and praise. In the matchless name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah in this house today. Oh, come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, is anybody ready to give God glory? Is anybody ready to give God praise? Hallelujah, God. Come on, we'll look across the sanctuary and wave at somebody. Say good morning. It's good to see you, neighbor. Oh, I see a two or three. Come on, wave at somebody. Say, hey, I haven't seen you since last Sunday. No one else gets the glory. No one else gets the praise. Hallelujah. Oh. Yes, sir, Jesus. Hallelujah. Receive the glory. No one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive the glory. 
to welcome on our online visitors. If you would just take your seat for just a moment. Amen. We know that we expect to have a larger than normal online audience on today in light of all that's going on in our world. Amen. 
But we're just glad to see you this morning, amen? And we want to thank all of our online visitors for joining us, and we hope that we will see you soon. But we invite you to participate in the service there at your home in any way that you can that makes you feel comfortable. And for those of us who are here this morning, we want you to know that we should not be fearful. Amen? We are not fearful, but we're also not foolish. Amen? And we're going to exercise caution during our worship service. So we ask that you refrain from shaking hands and hugging each other. You know the media have you think this world is coming to the end, right? But we know better, amen? But we're just going to exercise those precautions while we're here uh, in the sanctuary. We will not have prayer at the altar, uh, but we will remain at our seats during prayer time. And we will practice what we call social distancing, uh, simply meaning that we won't inc encroach upon each other's personal space. Amen? Amen. So today is our outreach Sunday also, and we want you to know that our elderly and medically fragile community is most at risk, so we are suspending our nursing home visits until further notice. Now, we want to say welcome to each and every one of you. If you're visiting this morning, wave your hand so we can see you. Amen. God bless you on today. We have our guest psalmist here on this morning, and we just thank her for uh, coming this morning. And uh, uh, we just bless the name of the Lord today. Now, we want our children to come forth at this time and bring their children's offering. Amen? For the word of the Lord says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he won't depart from it. So young people, won't you give them your offering at this time? How many really know that God is an awesome God? Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing it together, everybody. You are so great and mighty. You are so great and mighty. Are my heart's desire. Are my heart's desire. You are my strength and power. You are an awesome You're my redeemer. Gracious God in heaven, we thank you for the gifts that have been given by your children. We ask, oh God, that you bless these gifts, that they might be used to further your kingdom on earth as it already is in heaven. We bless you, we thank you, and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Can you just stand to your feet in the spirit of worship? We still want to give God glory and honor because he is worthy of the praise. How many really believe that today? <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. Hey, Top, can I, if you believe it, shout hallelujah. Oh, glory. You are an awesome God. And we bless you. Can you just give God a few minutes of worship with your fruit of your lips over your mouth? Say, God, we worship you today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, let's sing that again. Yeah. You are so great and mighty. Let's say it together. Say it. Say, you are so great. Somebody say, you're my redeemer. Say that. You are my redeemer. You are love and save your Lord. You're the one I worship, Jesus. Come on, say it. Say, you are it. Come on, let's take it up. Oh, you're so great and mighty. You are my. Come on, let's just sing a love song to Jesus. Are my strength and say you Lord are my Say you're my redeemer. Say it. You are my redeemer. You are loving Savior. You're the one I worship. Yes, you're Jesus. I worship you are in all sun.
You're my strength and power, Lord. Come on, say it. Say it. Say it. You are. Come on, I like this line. Say, You're my redeemer. Say it. You are my Say, oh, you, Lord. Oh, you. Hallelujah. Say, you are an awesome God. Say, you are an awesome God. I need you to look like you are healed and delivered. Oh, you. Lift those hands and say, God, only you. Oh, you. Come on, let me hear you say it ain't time. You are an awesome God. your mouth and say God we bless you Jesus for what you're doing in our land he's healing he's turning things around he said if my people were called by my name would just humble themselves and turn from their wicked way then and only then will he heal the land somebody say oh you Lord yeah yeah say oh you One more time, say, you are so great. Say, you are so great and mighty. Are my heart's desire. Heart's desire. Are my strength and power. And power you are an awesome. Say, you're my redeemer. You are my redeemer. Hallelujah. Are a loving Savior. You are the one I worship. One I worship, you are an awesome God. Come on, everybody, give God glory. He's still awesome. He's still amazing. He's the same yesterday, today, and when? Forevermore. Everything you need is in your praise. Open your mouth like God has already done it. He's already healed your body. He's already turned things around for you. Come on, ain't top the anointed temple of praise. Open your mouth and say, yes, sir, Jesus. We believe that you're awesome in everything that you do. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. He's a worthy God. He's a worthy God. How many really believe God is a worthy God? Hallelujah. You may be seated. Let's pay attention to our announcements. Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. March is Women's History Month. This year's theme is Valiant Women of the Vote. We honor the brave women who fought and continue to fight for the voting rights of others. This month's special honorees and short presenters are First Lady Kim Murray, Shunji Brown Woods, Senior Director of Global Professional Affairs, Psalmist Carla Tolbert Taylor, Dr. Cynthia Calhoun, and Judge Jane Chandler, Municipal Court Division Three for the City of Memphis. As we stand in solidarity for women, the women of ATOP will wear all black with pearls on Sunday, March 22. Do you know what significant milestone happens in March? It's our pastor's birthday. Happy birthday, Dr. Murray. We will celebrate with our pastor on Sunday, March 8th with cards, words of encouragement, and a birthday reception following service. Stop by and wish Dr. Murray a happy birthday. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Come and divide the word with us during Bible study each Monday at 6 p.m. or Wednesday at 12 noon as we study the books of Jeremiah and Lamentations. Prayer has power. Join us each Tuesday at 7 a.m. for anointed inspirations in the morning with Dr. Murray and for intercessory prayer each Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. The call-in number is 605-475-320. Access code... 
412-771-POUND. Come on, power up with prayer each Tuesday and Wednesday. Meet us at Quince Nursing Home March 1st and 15th at 2 p.m. for our outreach worship service. Supporting ministry on the first Sunday is the student ministry. Third Sunday supporting ministries are the greeters and usher ministries. You can join them too. Meet us at Quince at 2. Calling all students in grades 9 to 12. The student ministry will be attending the National College Fair Night on Thursday, March 26th at the Agri Center. Please sign up following service if you need a ride. The Christian Education Ministries Teacher Enhancement Workshop will be held on Saturday, March 28th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. This workshop is for all teachers of children, youth, and adults. If you are interested in teaching, you are welcome to come too. Mark your calendars for March 29th as we dedicate our conference room in memory of Brother Herman Holmes. Brother Herman was ATOP's resident counselor and provided some spiritual counseling to those in need. We are forever grateful for his service and for the time God allowed him to be in our presence, sharing his gifts. Don't forget to stop by the ATOP historical display on your way out today to see how faithful God has been over the last 20 years. The display will be available through the end of March. It's that time again. Our student ministry needs bags of individually wrapped candy for the Easter egg hunt that will take place in April. All candy is due by Sunday, April 5th. Thanks for your support. Those are our announcements. Have a blessed week. powerful, anointed, gifted, submitted to the call. Those are just a few of the words that would describe our singing ministry and vocalist powerhouse that will be featured today. A native of Memphis, Tennessee, raised in the holiness as a daughter of the Church of God in Christ. From a very young age, her greatest musical influence and inspiration will be drawn from her father, who is a masterful gospel singer. That determination would grow and mature and set her on a musical course to find her own voice and divine ministry and destiny. Using her divine gifts and talents to uplift the Lord's people, I will introduce to you our vocalist for today in Powerhouse, Carla Tolbert Taylor. And as she comes, I'm going to present her with this certificate of appreciation for outstanding performance in our annual Women's History Month series of presenters. <clears throat> okay. We would like to present you with this certificate of appreciation for outstanding participation in our annual Women's History Month of series of presenters. The church is grateful for your exemplary demonstration of our theme, Valiant Women of the Vote. May God continue to bless and favor your life. And she's going to sing for us today after our prayer. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Is this yours? Are you leaving this for me? I'll take it. Thank you so very much. Come on, let's give God some more praise if we can. Sister Taylor is going to come right after we pray. Can we stand all over this building, those of you who can? We're not going to ask you to come to the altar. We're not going to ask you to join hands, but we want you to be in an attitude of prayer. But we know that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. Somebody say amen. And there is absolutely nothing too hard for the Lord. And if we but yet trust and never doubt, somebody say, surely, surely he will bring us out. So whatever that concern might be, whatever that request might be, we ask that you would take it to God today and believe that he's able. 
As a matter of fact, he's so able, he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above any and everything that we can ever ask or think. And then there are those who are watching online. We ask that you would be in prayer with us as well. Whatever requests you have, you can put it there on the uh, information button there on your screen, and we will definitely lift you up in prayer as well. Let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Dear God, our Father, we bless you and we honor you, and we yet give you praise. Thank you, dear Lord, for this day. Thank you for our lives. Thank you for your spirit's abiding presence even in this place. Thank you, dear Lord, for waking us up right early this morning, clothed in our right minds. Thank you, dear Lord, that you've allowed us to make it through a very stressful week of all of the things that's happening in our world. You saw fit to leave us here just a little while longer. And so, God, we didn't come for form or fashion today, but we've come to this place to give you praise, to give you honor, and to give you glory. You are indeed a praiseworthy God, and we realize today that our hands are in your hands and that we are nothing without you. And so, God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, even though we might feel a little distant and a little separated, even though we have questions about this virus that's floating through the land. We know that you're well able to hear our cry and hear our plea. And you promised in your word that you would never leave us nor forsake us. As a matter of fact, you said you'd be with us always, even until the end. And so we thank you, dear Lord, that we're secure in you. We thank you, dear Lord, that our safety lies in you. We thank you today that you have promised that you were going to meet us even at the point of our need. So we thank you for being God all by yourself. You are a healer. You are a deliverer. And all power is within your hands. There is absolutely nothing too hard for you. So God, move in this place today. Shake us, oh God, and awake us. And cause us to be in tune with what you're trying to get done in and through us. And then, God, many of us have a prayer on our lips. We have a meditation in our hearts. And so, God, we pray that you will meet us at the point of our needs and let us know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're working on our case. So we thank you to that person closest to us, to our left and to our right. We pray for that person in front and behind us. And, God, we pray that you would just remove the fear, the doubt, that you will, God, restore us and give us the faith that we need to continue to press our way. But God also help us to be vigilant and be observant of everything that we need to do in order to protect ourselves. So God, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your peace that's the past of all understanding. And so now God, even as we prepare to take our seats, even as we continue to move into this worship experience, even as we are obedient to what you're trying to get done in our lives, God, we thank you for being God all by yourself. Bless those who are in the nursing homes and who are in the hospitals, those who are recovering from various surgeries and those who are dealing with this coronavirus and those who are still trying to make sense of their lives even after the tornado touched down. And so, God, we give you praise right now. We're not going to take this moment for granted. We give you glory right now, and we call it done in the name of Jesus. We claim victory in our situation, victory in our circumstances, victory in our lives, victory in this worship experience, victory in the things that we're putting before you today. So we love you and we honor you, and we thank you now for being our God. In Jesus' name we pray, and those who love God said amen. Come on, put those blessed hands together and give God some praise. Hallelujah. God bless you, Pastor Murray and Lady Murray. I appreciate you, Aton Poor. I'm Carlin, by the way. And I appreciate every one of you. I, I just love the Lord's people. I love people. And um, I'm thankful to Sister Calhoun and and to the entire household of faith for honoring me. Thank you. You didn't have to do that. And I appreciate you all. Um, just, um, just um, one of God's 
children, one of his best souls. And I just love lifting up the name of Jesus. I just love him with my whole entire heart. And I'm, I was telling you too, Jeremy, over here, <coughs> I had something planned in my mind, but as I was in worship, God said, uh-uh. And I said, okay. <laughs> um, and I simply heard this. I hear the, the chorus of it right this moment. I don't know why the words have slipped my mind, but I'll start with the chorus. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. It's greater than Corona. It's greater than cancer. 
cancer. It's greater than diabetes. It's greater than AIDS. It's greater. It's greater. It's greater. He's worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great. miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you Jesus you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you Nobody, nowhere, none can compare. You're awesome. You're wonderful. You're mighty. You're sovereign. You're righteous. You're faithful. You're trustworthy. You're great. You're great. You're great. You're great. You're great. And greatly to be praised. There is no
praise today. Come on, open your mouth and give him praise. We do give God glory today. Come on, open your mouth and give him glory. We thank him today for his goodness. Somebody shout hallelujah. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him for his peace that surpasses all understanding. And we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if God be for us, then he's more than the world is against us. Now, come on, let's put our blessed hands together and give God praise. Let's thank God for the gift of Sister Taylor today. Come on, let's give God praise. Thank God for his presence in this place. Come on, give God praise. I know many of you press your way in spite of all of the fears and all of the anxiety. But God is a keeper, and he's promised that he would never leave us nor forsake us. But he said, I'll be with you always. Somebody shout always, even until the end. Look at uh, somebody in your vicinity and say, I'm glad I pressed my way to the house of the Lord today. There are a couple of things Lady Kim has already shared with us, and I'm going to have to uh, follow suit because I'm not going to ask you to talk to your neighbor today and probably for the next couple of weeks. And I know that if Minister Shotwell can resist uh, not hugging, then I should be able to resist not asking you to talk to your neighbor. Somebody say amen. But here's what I want you to do, everyone standing. Just look this way now. You're not talking to your neighbor. Look this way toward me. And look straight ahead. Say, neighbor, don't look at your neighbor. Look straight at me. Say, neighbor, I can't talk to you this Sunday. And it's going to be a couple of Sundays. But we're going to go ahead and have church anyhow. Amen. Now, come on, put your hands together. Give God Just remain standing, those of you who can. 
even as we prepare to go to the word of the Lord. And listen now, this coronavirus is serious. It's real. And the landscape in which we know, knew uh, perhaps even just last week will never be the same. And so they haven't found the cure. They're working on it, but we have to be precautious in everything that we do. We've got to wash our hands. We've got to make sure that we take care of ourselves. And if you're feeling a little ill or if you feel like you're running a fever, you need to let somebody know. Somebody say amen so that you can get the help that's needed in order to overcome. So everybody's on standby. Everybody's on high alert. And so we dare not um, come into the house of the Lord and not use common sense. Somebody say amen. And so we praise God for our online viewing audience. We probably have more online today than normal, but we do praise God for them. And here's what I want you to do. If you have your uh, phone with you, how many of you have your phone? Go ahead and sign up to the uh, Facebook page of ATOP. And we want all of you to do that, if you will, so that your uh, viewing audience or your friends could also get an opportunity because many people stayed at home many churches canceled their service many are looking for an online uh, service that they can participate in so if you would be so kind to do that it would be greatly appreciated and we have quite a few on our online streaming service right now but we hope that many of you will do that as well somebody say amen well there is a word found in genesis the 22nd chapter Genesis chapter 22. I'll read just two of those verses and share with you what the Lord has laid on my heart. Genesis chapter 22, reading from the New King James Version of the Bible, we find these words. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here am I. Then he said, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Repeat these words after me. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham. And said to him, Abraham, and he said, here am I. Then he said, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains on which I shall tell you. God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for this worship experience. We thank you for what our ears have already heard, our eyes have seen, and our spirits have felt thus far. We pray now, dear Lord, that you might move upon our hearts and our minds through your word. You've already promised that it would not return unto your void. And so we thank you now for what your word is about to accomplish in this place. So we give you praise in advance. And we thank you for each person gathered in this place and those who are viewing live streaming. And so now, God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord God, our strength and our redeemer, in Jesus' name we pray. And those who love God said, Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The grass withereth, the flower fades. But the word of our God shall stand forever. I want to talk for a few minutes here today from the thought and the theme, this is only a test. This is only a test. Listen, my brother, look this way, my sister. Whatever you're up against, whatever you're going through, this is only a test. You know, we don't sing it much anymore, but growing up in Birmingham, Alabama, in the Winona area where the church was located in the Oxmoor community, 
where I'm from, we used to sing that old song, I'm so glad trouble don't last always. And so I thank God for that. I thank God that the storm is passing over. And hear me today, all of us in this room today, and those who are watching live stream, are either coming out of a test, headed toward a test, or we're being tested right now. But the good news is, it's only a test. Y'all remember this story, you're quite familiar with it. Abram, whose name means exalted father in chapter 17, of Genesis. But in chapter 22, he is called Abraham, the father of many nations. And the Bible reminds us that for some 25 years, Abram and Sarah have trusted in God's promises. But there is an interlude between the promise and its fulfillment. Promise revealed, promise fulfilled. And so Abraham and Sarah, like many of us, run ahead of God to help facilitate his plans. And so Sarah advises Abraham. She says, now look, Abraham, if you're going to have a son, you need to go ahead and get busy. Come on, somebody help me in this house. And you know I'm too old, but my handmaiden, Hagar, she's well able. And so the Bible tells us that there was no debate, there was no argument on Abraham's part. But Abraham went along with the scheme. And you know what happened. Ishmael is born. But Ishmael is not God's promise. And Abraham at this time was 75 years old when God made the promise that he would be the father of of many nations. And God waits until Abraham is 99 years old and Sarah is 90. Sexual fire has extinguished in Abraham and Sarah was last reported needing a hip replacement. And she's barely getting around at 90 years old. Y'all gonna help me preach this sermon? And then God announces that she's going to get pregnant. And reasonably, Sarah laughs, just like you were laughing. God says, why is Sarah laughing? I wish I had one Bible reader in here. He says, is there anything too hard for God? And isn't that just like God? He waits until every opportunity of our existence or our assistance to be depleted. Then he shows up to do what never could have been done without his assistance in the first place. And so the story goes, Abraham and Sarah have this bouncing baby boy. And, and Abraham just falls in love. He's head over heels. He cherishes Isaac. Isaac, his, his only son. Don't, for, don't forget now, Ishmael is the son, not a promise. A son of his esteem. But Isaac is born out of God's plan. He's a son of promise. He's a son of prophecy. And he's the son of Abraham's old age. And God one day calls Abraham to bring him up to Mount Moriah, to kill him. Y'all know this story. To sacrifice him on the altar. And that request of God is not just incomprehensible, but it's just not right. It doesn't seem reasonable for God to ask such a request. And the Holy Ghost let me know how Abraham was able to do it because, because of Abraham's faith in God, Isaac was already dead before they left home. Oh, y'all going to help me in a few minutes. Because before they left home, Abraham was determined to do what God said to do. Listen, my brother, look this way, my sister. If the only way you can do the impossible is to believe God before you leave home. 
you've got to say something like this. God, I don't understand how you're going to do it. God, I don't completely know how you're going to work it out. God, I don't know what you're going to do with this coronavirus, but I've trusted you in the past, and you've always come through. So whatever you tell me to do right now, I'm in your hands. I trust you with my life. I trust you with my future. I'm not going to hesitate or, or procrastinate when you tell me to go left or tell me to go right. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Is that anybody's testimony in here today? Because we must trust God and we got to trust his word. In times like these, we got to trust God and we got to trust his word. Hear me today because if you love God, then you love his word. His promises are sure, and his satisfaction is guaranteed. And when you love the word of God, all you've got to do is just hear it read, and it'll set your heart ablaze. Am I right about it? You know, as I thought about this story, and as I meditated, prayed, and deliberated, throughout the Bible, there are stories like this, stories that cause us, if you will, to be a little unsettled a little uneasy. Some of y'all just let that go right over your head that Sarah was 90 years old giving birth. That doesn't sound to be real. Some of y'all let it go right over your head that Abraham was 99 years old and God used him. Lady Kim, there's still help. All right, y'all don't want to help me. But it sounds a little unsettling. You see her over there. She doesn't believe. She laughed just like Sarah. But there's a little unsettledness, if you will, when we hear stories like this. And they always, in my opinion, contain some of the greatest revelations that we ever see in the Bible. Because, listen, it's impossible for Moses to stretch forth a rod and the seas open up. Just doesn't make sense. It's almost next to impossible for Joshua and the children of Israel to march around a wall and it just comes tumbling down. It's almost next to impossible for Gideon to start out with 32,000 army men and end up with 300 and win a war. It's almost next to impossible for a young man named David to take a slingshot and kill a giant nine feet, nine inches tall, 450 pounds, just doesn't make sense. And those kind of stories cause us logically not to believe it unless you put God in it. And when you put God in it, Red Sea's open. I say when you put God in it, Jericho walls come tumbling down. When you put God in it, David slays a Goliath. When you put God in it, Gideon wins the battle because when God is in it, that makes all of the difference. And too often we approach this story as if God is on trial. But listen, my brother, look this way, my sister. It's not God's character that's in question here. It's Abraham's character that is on the stand. Now, if you grew up between 19, let me see, uh, 63 I'm talking about growing up, not born. Grew up between 1963 and 1997. You've heard this message more than once. This is a test. For the next 60 seconds, this station will conduct a test of the emergency broadcast system. And then the announcer would say, this is only a test. And then you will hear that annoying sound that would come over the television station, especially in the 60s and the 70s, because back then there were only three stations. Y'all remember that? Some of us can't remember that. We've got amnesia. ABC, NBC, and CBS. I wish I had somebody who was old enough to know what I'm talking about here today. But now, somebody say, but now. There are over 300 channels, and you can, you can stay in surf all day, every day, for seven days, and still not get to see all of them. But back then, no station could refuse to make that announcement. 
And whenever the announcer came, the announcement came, the announcer would say, if this were an actual emergency, you would be instructed what to do. Can I stop and can I pause right there and tell somebody today who will listen to the preacher, this is only a test. And for the next 60 seconds, this will be a test of the emergency broadcast system. And if this were an actual emergency, God would show up himself, move you out of the way, and take over the situation. And you know, God tests us for two primary reasons. Point number one, first he tests us, it's, it's an opportunity for God to prove himself to us. But then secondly, it's an opportunity for us to prove ourselves to God. Listen to me, my brother. Look this way, my sister. God will go after anything you trust in more than him until you put it on the altar. Testing. One, two, testing. I say God will go after anything you trust more than him until you put it on the altar. Testing. One, two, three, testing. Mic check. I say God will go after anything you trust in more than him until you put it on the altar. You've got to put your marriage on the altar. You've got to put your sons and your daughters. You've got to put your family on the altar. You've got to put your money. You've got to put your health. You've got to put your desires on the altar. You've got to put what you want on the altar because what you want, what you own, what you have, if you trust that more than you trust in God, I'm here to tell you he'll go after it. If the gift ever becomes more important than the gift giver, then the very thing that God gave you to serve his purposes is undermining his plan for your life. And whenever you don't, whatever you don't turn into praise, it'll turn into pride. Oh, I'm preaching a little better than y'all saying amen. If God gave it to you, you ought to praise God for it. Whether it's a house, whether it's a car, you ought to give God praise, good health, you ought to thank God that you're still here, that you're not quarantined somewhere for the next 30 days. You ought to give God praise. Because if God gave it to you, praise God for it. Or else you will get proud that you have it. And the very thing that God gave you to serve him, that thing will start using you to undermine what God has called you to do. And when you get possessed by your possessions, your praise becomes pride. And God will fire you. Let me say that again. I say when you get possessed by your possessions, your praise becomes pride. And God will fire you. Listen, my brother, look this way, my sister. It's an awful thing for God to fire you and you keep coming to work. Oh, you remember Samson, don't you? God snatched his spirit from Samson, and he didn't even know it. Some of y'all on borrowed time up in here. You already been fired, but you keep. All right, y'all not going to help me up in here today. I wish I had somebody who was looking at live stream and give God some praise. Listen, whatever God blesses you with, if that thing becomes an idol, I'm here to tell you that God is coming after it. I don't want anything in my life. It's too much for me to give up for God. I don't care what it is. Because if you can't give it up, God is coming after it. Oh, somebody better hear me. Because God does not want the blessing in your life to ruin the plan that he has for your life. So since I'm here, let me raise a question. Can you identify today your Isaac? That thing that you cherish, that thing that you love so much, God is coming after that. Well, what's your Isaac? Isaac could be a job. Some of y'all will use your job as an excuse as to why you can't serve God. And God gave it to you. What's that thing that's keeping you from serving God? Is it your friends? Is it your spouse? Well, whatever it is that's standing between you and God, 
is closer to God than you are. So you got to be careful about what you put ahead of God. Now, don't get me wrong. Now, Abraham was a great saint. He was the father of the faith. He was the father of the faithful. Abraham had no notion of how God was going to turn that thing around. God said, get up. Abraham got up. God says, take your only son and bring him to the mountain, and I'll show you what's next. And without question, Abraham got up, took God at his word, and told Isaac, put your clothes on and go with me. He was on his way to make a great sacrifice. He was going to give up the only thing that he'd been waiting for for 99 years. What are you waiting? What are you willing to give up this morning that you've been waiting on God to give you and he gave it to you? Are you willing to give that up? Listen, my brother, God can never give back what you are not ready to give up. Oh, I'm helping about five people. God will never give back to you what you are not ready to give back to him. Because until you give it up, he can't give it back. And when he gives it back, he'll give you back more than he gave you. And your test then will become your testimony. And you can tell people without reservation or hesitation, I once was old, I once was young, but now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I remember how the Lord brought me. I remember how the Lord picked me up. I remember how the Lord turned me around. It'll become your testimony because when God opens one door, when God closes one door, he'll open another door. And if he doesn't open that door, he'll open up a window and he'll pour out blessing that there's not room enough to receive. Abraham was a great saint, wasn't he? He had a great son. Because in the text, the Bible says Isaac never rebelled against his father. And by this time, Isaac is a young man. He's a robust man. Abraham is an old man. Isaac could have easily ran off and got away from his father. But not one time in this text does it even suggest that he rebelled against his father. Watch this. Isaac carried the wood that would take his life. Isaac carried the burden that he would die on. He put on his shoulders. Sounds like somebody else we know, doesn't it? The wood that he would be sacrificed on. Lord, don't let me get ahead of myself. He takes the wood for the burnt offering. And he says to his father, Father, Abraham says, here am I, my son. He says, I see the wood. I see the fire. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham looks at his son Isaac and says, Son, God will provide. And listen to me today. Whenever you can't see your way, whenever you're in a difficult situation that nobody else can figure out, whenever you can't see the answer to what's going on in our world today and the dilemma that we find ourselves in, when you don't know how things are going to work out or turn out in your life, I'm here to decree that it's only a test. I've got some good news for somebody who's scared to go to work tomorrow. God will provide. Won't he do it? Has he ever provided for you? Shout, yes, he will. Somebody say, yes, he will. Does anybody know him as Jehovah Jireh? The Lord who will provide. God, won't he do it? He'll put food on your table. He'll make your enemies leave you alone. He'll open doors that are closed. God will provide. Somebody shall provide. Now come on and put your hands together and say, the Lord will provide. Now here's, here's, here's how he does it. Abraham takes that knife and he's ready to bring it down and kill his only son. And when God 
sees Abraham's faith, the whole situation changes. Because the test of God is not just to prove to Abraham, but for Abraham to prove to God. I wish I had somebody. And hear me today, God cannot demonstrate his faithfulness until you exercise your faith. Some of y'all are looking and waiting on God to do something, and God said, no, I'm waiting on you to do something. You're waiting on God, and God is waiting on you. Some of us are waiting on God to do something faithful, but we can't even exercise our faith by coming to church. Abraham was about to kill Isaac, and God said, Abraham, now I know that you can trust me. Your faith has been vindicated. Turn around, Abraham. Stop what you're doing. There's a ram caught in the thicket. And the ram caught in the thicket represents provision. Somebody shall provision. God precedes what he provides for. Okay, you'll get that on the way home. And what he precedes, he provides for. And on the other hand, when you look at this situation, it was a painful situation. Just like what we're going through that day. It's a painful situation. Some of us, our nerves are, are wrapped and we're on edge. We don't know what to do. But on the other side, there is provision. On the one side, is a headache. But on the other side, there's healing. On one side is grief, but on the other side is glory. On the one side is sorrow, but on the other side is salvation. On the one side is death, but on the other side is delight. On the one side is brokenness, but on the other side is blessedness. The Lord will provide. And it's in the middle of brokenness and blessedness where God shows up. I believe I've got about 15 witnesses here today who thought you were on your way down. But God, somebody shout, but God. But God showed up, and he turned that situation around. And here you are today, you're clothed in your right mind. I'm here to decree today that it was nobody but God. And the ram can only be provided when Abraham needed it. <laughs> I say that ram can only be provided when Abraham needed it. Somebody say amen. And one of the things we have to find out, God will not show up until the situation is past your help. You've got to do everything in your own power. You've got to be aware of what you need to do. And then when you've gotten past your own limitations, God shows up every time. God will not show up until the situation is past your help. And the ram caught in the thicket represents for us a great substitute. And God is not about to allow Abraham to do on Mount Moriah what he's about to do on Mount Calvary. I said, God won't do it. He said, hold up, Abraham. I've got another sacrifice. God was not going to allow Abraham to give up his only son because one Friday, somebody say one Friday, on a skull sheep hill, God was going to send his only son to be the ultimate sacrifice. God is not going to allow Abraham to do more for him than he was able to do for Abraham because Christ is the real substitute is coming. It is coming through 42 and generations. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He died on a hill, didn't he die? He was buried in a borrowed tomb. And he stayed there all Friday night. Didn't he do it? He stayed there all Saturday. He stayed there all Saturday night. But somebody shout early. Early. Somebody say early. Early that Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. The ultimate sacrifice. For God so loved you and he so loved me that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting
Come on, shout hallelujah. Somebody thank you, Lord. Aren't you glad today? The trouble don't last always. Aren't you glad today? That God's got everything under control. I'm here to decree today that this too shall pass. And we're coming out all right. Don't wait until the battle is over. But go ahead and give him praise right now. Don't wait until you come out on the other side of this coronavirus. But go ahead and give him praise right now. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look, somebody say this is only a test. Come on, open your mouth and say this is only a test. Come on, let's decree it in the house. This is only a test. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're faced with, it's only a test. And God will show up. And when he shows up, he shows out every time. He may not come when you want him to. But I'm a living witness and I've got some witnesses in here today who can testify to the fact that he's always right on time. Come on, stand to your feet and give God praise. It's only a test. And God is not through blessing you. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Father, we bless you. We honor you. And we yet give you praise. Thank you for that reminder today that it's only a test. Now, spirit of the true and living God, fall afresh on us. We know you haven't forgotten about us. You haven't left us. You haven't forsaken us. You're right here with us in what we're going through. So we thank you for being that kind of God. God, you've already promised that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. God, even now, we pray that you would allow us to use common sense even as we make our way through this very difficult time that we're facing. Help us to be strong. Help us to study your word. Help us to rely on you to get us through. And then, God, when we look back over these days, we know that it was just a test you will give us a powerful testimony because we dared to keep our faith and our trust in you. For the person to our left and to our right, we pray to the Lord that you would give them keeping power, that you would sustain them during this very difficult time. Help us all not to grow weary in well-doing. For you said in your word in due season, we shall reap if we may not. And you said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord God is saying unto the church. So we love you today. We stand on your word. We stand on your promises. We're in the meantime, in between time. But you are still God. Thank you now. For your promises are sure. And your satisfaction is yet guaranteed. It's in the powerful and mighty name of Jesus, even the risen Christ, we pray. And those who love God, come on, give God some praise. Officers, won't you come? Congregation, just remain standing. I don't know your situation or your circumstance, but I do know a God. And I'm here to remind you today that whatever you're faced with, whatever you're going through, God has not forsaken us. He said, I'll be with, with you always, even until the end. So if that's a man, woman, boy, or girl here today under the sound of my voice, who wants to come in an attitude of surrender, I encourage you to come today and release whatever it is you're faced with to God watch God begin to work on your case. If you're here today and you're looking for a church home and you just uh, thought it was accidentally that you pressed your way to ATOP, 
But after hearing the word today, you see it's providential that God was speaking to you today as a result of his word. If you're here today and you want to make this your church home, won't you come? We want to receive you today that you can be a part of the body of Christ called Atop. And use your gifts in being faithful to God. Perhaps someone online who's watching, I don't know what your relationship might be, but I do know a God who's well able. He's so able, he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above any and everything that we can ever ask or think. So even if you have not accepted him, then this is a great time to be in relationship with God.
version from our normal way of doing things. We're going to have the officers to come, uh, four of them, as they prepare to receive uh, our tithes and offerings. And we also want to have two of the officers to stand at the table and to prepare the elements because we want you to receive your elements as you come around to give your tithes and offerings and take your cup back to your seat with you. And we're not going to pass it out. We're not going to distribute it. But two of the officers, can you come and stand at the table, please? Uh, and we're going to pray over the bread. And uh, we're also going to pray over the wine. And we're going to just open up all of the, uh, the uh, yes, ma'am, the trays and allow them to come around and just get it out of the tray after they uh, place their tithes and offerings in the basket. Does that make sense? All right. So I need the other officers to come to receive the tithes and offerings that you would normally do, but the two officers who are standing at the table will assist in making sure that everyone uh, receives uh, an element of the Lord's Supper. We need one more officer. That's right. But first, we're going to uh, prepare for a time of giving. Somebody say amen. Amen. We know that God indeed loves a cheerful giver, a hilarious giver. Do we have that information coming on the screens? And for those who are viewing live streaming, we know many of our church members stayed in today. Some are a little under the weather. Some have just uh, come from surgery. Brother Jerry Perkins uh, had surgery this past week. And others are still uh, rehabbing uh, Mother Lillian Briscoe. But we want to make sure that those who are viewing, that you also participate in this time of giving. Uh, there is a donate button right there on your screen that will send you to a secure site so that you might also participate in this portion of our service. And those of you who are yet present, you're going to give electronically you see information there on the screen that will direct you as well. But can we all stand to our feet at this time as we prepare to come and present our gifts? And when you after you've come around presenting your gifts, just pick up your element from the tray, and then we'll uh, have the prayer and the blessing over it once you get back to your seat. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we bless you. We honor you. Thank you for each person in this room. Thank you for an opportunity to give back to you what you've already blessed us with. And so now, God, we pray even as you uh, 
were willing to sacrifice your life that we might make the necessary sacrifices in order to extend your kingdom. So we love you today. We honor you and we bless you. Receive now these tithes and these offerings. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said amen. Two inside sections, you may be seated. The two outside sections, even as you're preparing to come, the outside baskets are for the tithe. The two inside baskets are for our benevolent fund. And if you're visiting with us today, the chest is for uh, our seed faith giving. And if you want to plant a seed in this ministry, you can place it in the chest. ourselves around this table in remembrance of the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. What was on that night when he was about to be betrayed, being in the upper room with the 12 disciples there on the table was bread and also wine. After he took bread, broke it, and shared it with the 12. Says, take ye all of this, for this is my body broken for you. And as often as you eat of this, this do in remembrance of me. In like manner, he took the cup, said, take you drink all of this. As often as you drink of this cup, you shall feel my death and suffering until I return. The officers will lead us in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you now once again, Lord God, for this great opportunity. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Lord God, most of all, we thank you for your body that you sacrificed for each and every one of us. We thank you now, Lord God, for this bread that represents your body. And Father, for the sake, I ask you to forgive us of all of our sins, individually and collectively. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God, we thank you for this wine which represents your blood. We thank you that it does reach from the highest mountain to the lowest valley, and it cleanses us from head to toe. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the sacrifice you made on our behalf. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us eat together in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Let us drink together in remembrance of our death, burial,
How do you feel this morning? <laughs> Amen. Just a few more announcements before we uh, leave on today. We have still planned a congregational meeting, a brief meeting next Sunday following service. Um, please watch your email and your um, constant contact and the website for any updates uh, that may come forth this week. So congregational meeting is still planned for next Sunday. Women, we are to wear all black and pearls on next Sunday also. So please don't forget that. Of course, the nursing home uh, has been canceled uh, indefinitely, so we will not go to the nursing home on today. All other activities this week have also been canceled, is that correct? So no Bible study on tomorrow or Wednesday. So um, everything has been canceled. Don't forget to bring bags of individually wrapped candy. We are still planning on doing our uh, Easter festivities for our um, youth and our children. So we need those plastic eggs and bags of candy. You can bring them and put them in the boxes in the foyer area or drop them off in the church office. Young people, if you plan on going to the National College Fair night, you need to sign up following service on today. Uh, we need at least 15 to go in order to take the church bus. So if you're planning on going to the National College Fair night, on Thursday, March the 26th at the Agri Center, uh, you're to meet us here at the church and then we'll go together on the, on the church bus on that night. So meet us here at 5 o'clock, but you must sign up in order for us to go on the bus together. Um, we want to thank uh, Sister Carla so much. What a blessing you were on today. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you. And you can come back anytime you want to. Oh, yeah. Amen. God bless you. All right. Well, we're getting ready to go down from this place. We're not going to hold hands, but I want you to stand. We're going to pronounce the benediction. And do be uh, mindful that you have precautions because uh, this disease is, uh, this virus is spread through personal contact. And just be mindful of that. Always wash your hands and be uh, alert of your surroundings and do your uh, due diligence and make sure that you're safe, all right? Let's bow our heads. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We thank you now for being our God. We're grateful for this time that you've afforded us to spend together. Thank you for your spirit's abiding presence even in this place. Now, God, let that same spirit abide, abide to fulfill and fulfilled to overflow in each and every one of our lives. It's in the powerful and marvelous and matchless name of Jesus, even the Christ, we pray. Those who love God said, amen. Give God another hand clap of praise. Go in peace. And may the peace of God go with you.